Have you ever wondered about the animal world, maybe the insect world, and wondered how do they have sex? How do they mate? Do they have foreplay? Prepare to be completely weirded out. Hi everyone, my name's Abby, welcome to Animal Educate. And today we're gonna to be looking at something very bizarre. We're gonna be looking at strange and unusual mating habits of animals. When I was researching this, I had to decide which animals I was going to cover in the video. And honestly, there were so many to choose from. I narrowed it down to these because they, I guess, weirded me out the most. If I was gonna cover all of them, I would literally be here all day. Let's get started. Mating is really risky business for the praying mantis. The female is pretty much in control and she'll lure the male in with her pheromones. And then she has to make a decision. She makes a decision on whether or not to bite the male's head off before or after mating. <coughs> and yes, this is very, very common. So much so that the males actually make up 60% of the female diet during breeding season. Some lucky males do get to mate and enjoy the experience, but interestingly, the females that do eat the males lay more eggs. So if you look at it from an evolutionary sense, it means actually the males are benefiting in the long run. Giraffes have some very strange habits, perhaps not as sinister as the praying mantis, but not particularly appealing. So the male will check whether the female is ready to mate by tasting her urine. Yep, that's right, tasting mm. her urine. Not only that, he'll nudge her rear end to encourage her to urinate. If he can then taste the hormones that indicate she's ready, he'll follow her around trying to mount her and she'll just keep walking away from him until she decides when she wants to mate. When she's ready, she'll just stand and she'll let him mount her, and so it begins. Strangely, not many people know that snails are hermaphrodites. This means that they have both male and female organs. You would think this would make life fairer, not so much. Snails will find their mate by a taste and smell and waving their tentacles in the air. When they finally meet, this will continue but with full body contact. This can go on for hours. So you could say that the experience starts pretty well, but then comes the love dart. Both snails are impregnated by injecting sperm into each other, which sounds kind of normal, right? Well, it gets pretty stabby. They have sharp reproductive organs which repeatedly stab. Now obviously this is going to take its toll. Both snails in the pairing transfer sperm, but it all depends on who had the better shot with the dart that ultimately fertilizes the eggs. In some species only one snail fires the dart, but in others like the garden snail, they both do. It's a rather challenging affair for the male pufferfish to attract a female. Let's just say that he has to really embrace his creativity. They'll spend days creating symmetrical patterns in the sand, and they can be really big too, up to about two meters. If the female likes what she sees, she'll lay the eggs in the middle of the circle. The mating involves the females laying the eggs, and then the males will fertilize them after, externally. The females vanish and some studies have noted that the males will just stay around for about six days after. It's potentially a humiliating experience for the male hanging fly. It's all about keeping her sweet or rather keeping her full. It takes about 20 minutes for the female sperm storage to fill up. And in that time, the male has to keep her fully occupied with food. The male will try and find her a large enough insect to keep her happy throughout. So if she finishes the insect before he's finished filling up that storage, she could give him the boot. Or if she doesn't finish it 
and the male's done, he could then take that insect back off her and go and find another mate to give it to. The Argonauts octopus probably has the most interesting mating tactic in the world. Firstly, the male is tiny, less than three quarters of an inch long, while the female can be up to 30 times his size. He has a specialised arm, a tentacle-like organ called a hectocotylus. It's really long, but the strangest thing about it is it's detachable. After attaching to the female, the male releases the hectocotylus. This then worms its way to the female mantle cavity. She can actually store these, but not just one. She can store them from different mates, store them up so she can use them over time. No male has actually been found alive growing a new hectocotylus. Only dead specimens have been found. This scares the hell out of me. Have you ever experienced a clingy boyfriend or girlfriend? Heck yeah! The anglerfish takes it to a whole new level. The anglerfish mating starts with the male sinking his teeth into the female body. He attaches himself permanently and then lives as a parasite on the larger female body. The skin and the blood vessels fuse together, which means the male gets everything he needs in terms of nutrients from his host mate's blood. <laughs> As they fuse together, the male becomes completely absorbed into the female body, losing any independent existence. All that remains is the sexual organ, which means the female can use it when she's ready to reproduce. The male honeybee lives a tragic tale when he mates with the queen. It's the last thing he does. He'll ejaculate with an explosive pop, rupturing his endophilus. He becomes paralyzed and flips over backwards. His barbed endophilus remains in the queen and it's ripped from his body. He dies and the queen holds onto his semen for later use. The beautiful peacock spider likes to flaunt his stuff. He dances and lifts up his tail flap and once uncurled resembles an abstract Indian blanket of intense colours. He'll then bop up and down, hopping around. Not only that, he's got quite large furry mouth parts which makes him look like he's smiling. When a male finally spies a female, he may begin courtship by producing vibrations. So the male hooded seal has the most epic party trick to attract the ladies. He has elastic nasal cavities and membranes which can inflate. The result is a very large reddish pinkish balloon on the end of his face and this communicates to the females his availability and his health status. As usual guys, thank you so much for watching today. I really hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned lots of weird and wonderful things about the animal world and their strange mating sexual tactics. If you've got anything that you want to contribute, please do comment, give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time.